in today's video, we're going to focus on our tree and creating uh, some texture uh, using lines um, to create the texture of the tree bark and some shading and also to give the tree trunk and the limbs some more three dimensional um, form by using um, like contour lines, cross contour lines. So let's get started. I'm going to give my tree an outline and I am going to use a ultra fine Sharpie marker for that. If you do not have an ultra fine Sharpie, a very thin pointed Sharpie marker, I would suggest not using a regular Sharpie marker. I would use a black colored pencil that you have sharpened to a point. Um, and the reason being is you just wanna try with the tree because it's not really large to get the thinnest outline that you possibly can get. So I'm going to also draw some contour lines on my tree to give the tree limbs and tree branches more of a rounded look. And contour lines basically just kind of cross over the form of what you're drawing. And sometimes they go all the way across and sometimes they do not. Okay, so I'm going to do this more in a time lapse so that you can see the whole process of the tree developing. I am going around the left side of the tree and I'm trying to make the lines uh, actually put them in a little heavier make them a little darker put more lines in on the left side of the tree the left side of the branches because this the moon is over here to the right and it's shining it's gonna be shining on the right side of all the branches and the right side of the tree so that's where we're gonna be putting our highlight in so I wanted to put in as much of my ink lines now and then I want to start to go in and put some highlights into the tree before I add more dark colors tree shaded in I did leave a lot of it bright yellow for a reason I want it to look like the moon is shining on the tree so I don't want the tree to get too too dark I can always make it darker after I paint the background in um, the next step is to if you haven't already color in your moon we're gonna start to and for this portion I would use a crayon but I feel like I want to remember if you're thinking back to Van Gogh's sky, he has these rings around the moon that kind of make the moon look like it's uh, shining. So we want to draw some of those and we have them in pencil. You can just draw right over your pencil lines um, in with the yellow crayon and leave some space in between. You're not coloring, but you're just actually using lines to create those pulsating rings. We can throw some stars in the sky by coloring in very small circles like the size of a hole punch and also drawing some rings, yellow rings around them. I don't know how well the video is gonna pick up yellow because it's such a light color, but we can, um, I, I'm explaining it to you, so you should be able to. And then you could have some stars in the in between the tree branches that don't have rings necessarily around them. And then the last thing I'd like to do is take the white and just kind of draw around the rings in white. You know where they are. That's why we did them in yellow first. And just press hard. We want to create a wax resist so that when we paint our background in, 
um, we're gonna see the yellow and these white lines kind of show up underneath. And we're gonna do the same thing with um, our wind. So we have the wind sketched in. Uh, instead of white, I wanna take some yellow. And before I even go into the wind, I want to put a bright yellow highlight along the top of my horizon line back here. And I'm gonna kind of color it in thick. So I'm taking the yellow and it could touch the rings on the stars. That just makes the stars look like they're lower on the picture plane, close to the horizon, they're far off in the distance. I just wanna make a nice bright yellow edge, like a glow along the top of my horizon line. And then I'm gonna take my yellow and I'm going to outline the wind following my pencil lines, my swirling wind first in yellow, just to visualize or make the viewer think that the moon is shining and showing you the way the clouds are blowing or the way the direction that the wind is blowing. I don't wanna fill it in with yellow. I just want to outline both sides. So remember we we have two lines to represent the wind. So I wanna outline both lines and then I want to look for a very light blue crayon and I want to just come into my inside of my wind with a light blue crayon. And it doesn't have to be perfectly colored in. Uh, you could use more of a line stroke than uh, just filling in solidly. And I could do a little on the outside. Just don't cover the yellow, put it next to the yellow. So I'm using lines to fill in my wind. If you wanna fill it in a little bit more solidly, you can with white, just stay inside that wind shape. Try not to let the white go outside of the shape because then when you paint with a dark blue watercolor for the background, which is what we should be doing if you have watercolor paint, if you don't, you could use just a dark crayon and fill in, just carefully go around your stars. So now I'm going to take a detail brush that comes to a point and I'm going to use some uh, blue watercolor paint and I have it in a cup you might have it in a paint set and I'm going to carefully paint in between all of my branches and um, but if I touch the tree a little bit it the yellow should reflect and create that have that wax resist so that I don't turn my tree completely blue and now I'm gonna paint in my sky. watercolor wax resist starry night pumpkins in perspective project and you at this point you should just let it dry don't pick it up it will run if you pressed hard enough with your crayon and your colored pencil the watercolor should stop right at the outline um, so your tree should not be full of blue paint um, even in the tiny areas if you use just the tip of the brush and go in between you should be fine and uh, you see where it's dark and puddly here, just leave it and um, just see how it, you know, dries on the paper. Try not to move it around too much. Just let it air dry and it'll take about an hour or so. And um, if you wanna go back and make some areas a little bit darker, uh, you certainly can, but I would wait for it to dry. So I hope you had fun and I can't wait to see what you've created. Bye.